Hello everyone, this is Eve Spade with Collective Chickadee. For those that are new here, thank you for joining me today. I hope you will find this channel helpful and inspiring to make something beautiful. And for those that are returning, I just really appreciate all the love and the support that you have given me. And I truly love this art community that we have created together. And I do have some exciting news to share with you at the end of the video, and I can hardly wait, so hang in there. I've decided I wanted to do a series of tutorials on constructing different journal bases. Today I will focus on the usual one piece with the spine scored in the middle. And with this technique, you can choose two different ways to stitch in your signatures, either straight through the spine or the hidden stitch. And I will try, and I say I'll stress out the try part, to make this as streamlined as possible. I'd much rather you be creating and not watching a long video, but we will see. We'll see how that turns out. And my motto is, why make one journal cover when you can make 12? I know that sounds crazy, but there is something about this madness. One, you have the supplies out already, so you might as well go ahead and make a few more. Two, sometimes, and it's not really sometimes, it's more like always, when I am in the midst of creating something, another idea kind of pops in my head, and so that way I can apply it to the other covers that I'm working on. And three, it is just so nice to have covers waiting for the guts to be put in. And when I say guts, I mean the signatures <laughs> for those quick projects and, and gifts that you might want to make and give out. All right, okay, so enough with all that. Let's go ahead and get to it. The first journal cover that I'm going to construct, I'm going to use this beautiful digital from my neighbor, Angie, from the Mountain Girl Studio. She, too, is from beautiful Montana, and she actually painted this journal cover, and she decided to make some digitals for the rest of us to play with. So I will share her information down below. And I had printed this on presentation paper. And I will reinforce the spine in the cover and then do a little layout. But I'm just going to go ahead and cut this down to 10 and a half by 3 and 3 fourths with a 1 and 1 fourth spine. So let me just go ahead and, and do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and score this. Let's get this in the middle. What I like to do is kind of get rid of this white edge here. So what I have is one of those fat Sharpies and I have just used my little exacto knife and cut a notch in there. Can you see that? That way it just catches this edge really nicely. And I just go oops kind of go along the edge here and that little ledge just grabs onto the edge of that paper just nicely. It's kind of one of those little tricks of the trade. And then I'm going to go ahead and darken the edges here. What did I do with my little... And this little nifty thing um, I got from Target at the little dollar section when you walk into the store 
and it's for whiteboard purposes but boy it sure is nice because then I can make my mess here and clean it up easily and put it aside instead of cleaning my my workspace all the time so let's go ahead and just darken the edges here all right now I'm just going to reinforce my spine and for those that have not seen my other tutorials, I like to use this packing paper or this packing tape. It has some strings in there, so this is what I reinforce my spine with. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that to shape. And this is one of those gluing kind. So I do have a little sponge. So I'm just going to wet that sponge and place that on there like so. You just get it really good and wet. Just lay that in the middle. I'm going to grab a, a scrap piece of paper and just really adhere that to the spine. It's just really nice to have a little reinforcement there. And I do like to crease that while it's still wet so it has a little bit of give to it before it gets too dry. And next I'm going to do is reinforce the cover. And I like to use my scraps, whether it's the cardstock or file folder that I, I, a lot of journals I make, I use this heavy duty file folder. And my cutter is so nice that um, I'm able to butt the edges together like so and tape them up and then I will use this for the inside of, well, let me just show you really quick. All right. All I do, I use the edges on my scoring board to line those up beautifully and just tape them up like so. Let me go ahead and grab another one. I'll go ahead and just kind of eyeball it and mark it. You don't want it to be too close to where the crease is so you have some space for your signatures. That looks good. I'll just go ahead and cut here and then I'll measure this and cut for the second side here. And this is just regular scoring tape. I get this on Amazon. I'm just going to really focus on getting it. And I'm putting this on the same side where the tape is, which really doesn't matter because I am going to use some decorative paper on the other side. Just want to make sure that it's really stuck on there really good. Just rub that in. But I do want to go ahead and darken the edges. I'm going to place it here, but like I said, I am going to put decorative paper on here. So just in case there's a little edge showing, I want it to be a little distressed. So let me do that really quick. All right, now we're just going to go ahead and adhere that in place. And this is just going to make that cover nice and sturdy. I 
like to try to get as close to the edge as possible. So that is what we have. It's good and sturdy, and um, the spine is now reinforced. So now the fun part. Let's go ahead and design a layout. I'm going to use this as a background. I kind of wanted to do a couple of lacy ones for some projects that I have brewing in my mind. So I am just going to go ahead and just start playing with some lace. Okay, so I think what I want to do, I got some nice neutral colors here. They're not bright white. I think what I'm going to do is maybe put this down here at the bottom. I kind of like the idea of this that could be down at the bottom maybe I should um, I think what I want to do is have this as the tie for me to as a closure and maybe I could just go ahead and let's see attach that on there Like I said, I just kind of wanted a pretty little lacy. That's the center. That way the closure is already attached. I hate to cover up this beautiful print, but let's go ahead and do that. And I like the idea of this down here. This is kind of stretchy. Go ahead and use the fabric tack again. It's all the same color scheme going on. I love that we can still see the color and the texture. All right, I like that. Yeah, I just really want it to be kind of a, a loose lot of movement and vintage looking. All right, let me go ahead and get my fabric tack again. All right, I just want to let that dry before I do the next, next step. I have these old cabinet cards that I've scanned and just printed out. I kind of want to use those images and I'm not really sure how I want to use it. I really can't go wrong 
with any of these. Um, they're super cute. Uh, I think I'll use that one. And I know I want to build up the layers, so I have some of these printed out. I believe these are from Artie Mays Digitals. Maybe. I'll do is use one of these tickets here. I don't mind doing fussy cutting, but boy, I love the sound of ripping paper. Isn't that funny? I like to get a little movement in my my pieces here. A couple torn edges maybe. Like I said, this is the fun part. You just never know how it's gonna end up. I have all sorts of scraps around me. I don't know. I, I, I think anything would go. I think this photograph needs some distressing, though. Sometimes if you use a little sanding block, it'll take some of the ink off of your print. I think I need this whole flower. Maybe I'll just cut half of it. That way I can use it for another, another project. So you know we like to use our scraps, but it seems like we end up making more scraps with our scraps. Once again, I'm going to play with one of these downloads from Artie Mays. All right, I got these little flowers out. See what would work nicely. I love how that works. I like the dark one. Okay. I think this one I like. I feel like I need some kind of little metal piece though. Maybe a little paper clip. Yeah, maybe I can find a little purple. Something, something to go on there. Let's see. Alright, what looks better? This. If I could just cut the fur off of this, I kind of like that. Let me try that. I'm just gonna. Well, if I could see, first I need to grab some glasses. I think what I'm gonna do is just cut that fuzz off and use that little piece of fiber there. Okay, that took a long time, <laughs> but I like what I added. Y'all, I think I like this. I think this is uh, the layout I'm going to do. So all I have to do is glue that where it needs to go. Um, I think this is a little too clean, though. I think I need to 
add a little smudge or something, a little distress. All right, sweet. All right, let me just go ahead and glue that all down. And then we're gonna have that cover completed. All right, I think I'm done. So look how beautiful that journal turned out. And the great thing is, I don't have just one, but I have two. So at least this part is ready to do a layout on it whenever I decide to come in here and it could be a completely different theme but the insides are done so the spine is reinforced and so is the cover and now this one is complete just need to put the guts in there you ready for another one let's do it all right, so the next journal, or journals, because I'm going to do two at the same time, I'm going to do a 12 by 12 cardstock that I'm just going to cut down so the measurements are 8 by 12 with a one and a half inch spine. And this time I'm going to use this print that belongs to Angie from the Mountain Girl Studio. And we are going to play with it in a different way. This time we're not going to take away from the beautiful artwork that she has done here. All right, what I'm just gonna do is go ahead, score these, and um, then reinforce the spine and also the cover. So I will just speed zippy through that real quick. All right, here we go. All right, so those are ready for a little layout. And like I said, I wanna use this from the Mountain Girl Studio. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down to the size that I need. I am going to go ahead and measure from the bottom because I want more of the lighter color than the dark color on this one. I kind of have an idea what I want to do. I definitely want to distress the edges first. I'm going to use a die cut on here. Let me go grab the one I want. I am going to use the Tim Holtz Thinlets here with the little moose, the Mary Moose. Is that what it's called? I don't know if there is even a name on this. Anyhow, super cute. All right, I cut that out, and I'm going to save this for another project that's coming up in the next videos. I'll put that aside. I, um, let's see. I want to do more distressing on this. Let's see, maybe if I tear it from this side. Yeah, I like that. 
All right, I'm just going to hop over to the sewing machine and stitch around here. And I All right, I'm back. What I have done here is just do a really fine stitch along the edges. And I'm going to kind of curl up the edges a little bit. Just make it have a little more texture. Curl them up. And tear maybe a little bit. I just really want that white part to show up. All right, this is how this is going to look, I think. So I did go ahead and cut this mousse out in white because I want that to to pop out. So I'm just going to go ahead and just tape that in here. Can you even see what I'm doing here? <laughs> Let me scoot in. So I'm just inlaying that white mousse in the cut of the beautiful decorative paper, the digital download, I guess I should say. Just make sure he's nice and secure in there. Right. So I taped that in there. So he's going to really pop. Oops. Look how cute that is. I love it. I'm going to use my double side tape. Alright, so isn't that cute? You see the detail with the, the edges and the stitching. So let's go ahead and get the second journal. It's basically the same thing, but I wanted to have a different option instead of the mousse. So I tore the back page as well. This one I left plain. I'm thinking um, I kind of wonder if I want to do the spine like this. I don't think so. I kind of like it. All right, let me go ahead and get this together for you guys. Hey, look how pretty that is. I like that. And from here, I could do anything I want. Um, but what is that that I want? Let me get the other one together. So I use the dark brown and the purple to bring in the purple colors in this beautiful download. And this just sets a different mood with the dark brown. Hmm. Let me get one of those name plates. Oh, hello. Hello, any of those would work. I think I'm going to leave this one plain for when I know I need it for a project, but at least it is already done. All I have to do is put a decorative paper in here with the pockets and make the signatures. But all right, so that is four. Let's do one more. I'm going to now use eight and a half by 11 cardstock that I'm going to cut down to seven and three-fourths with um, a one-inch spine and I'm going to use this digital download from Angie the Mountain Girl Studios. Isn't it gorgeous? Um, but first I have to go outside. I feel like there's magic going on out there and um, the open glow is happening. So I'm going to do a quick little 
video of that and then come in and show you. And then we'll start on this project again. What do you think? Wasn't it magical? Oh my gosh, you guys. I cannot tell you how much I love living here. I absolutely love it. Even when it's cold. Because I told you, or maybe I didn't tell you. It got down to 11 below. Yes, just a couple days ago. And it's just October. So it's, um, yeah, it's going to be one of those winters which I'm okay with. Um, I love being outside all four seasons. It doesn't matter. Um, cold, hot. I don't care for the wind. I have to say that. It kind of makes me a little grumpy. Um, but if it's not windy, we can be outside every day of the year. Truly. We just have to wear the proper clothing. And um, huh. Okay, so the snow, as you can see, I'm, I'm loving it. And I'll do a little video of my hound dogs. Uh, I have two little miniature dachshunds, Ella Rue and Pippa, and the other morning when we had our fresh snow, I did a little video, and I'll show that to you, too. Okay, so I just need to finish, and um, like I said, I want to use this beautiful piece here, and I don't know. Let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and cut it down. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and prep the insides by reinforcing the spine and also making the cover a little more sturdier. You know the process, but I'll just go ahead and do that. Right, those are ready and I know I speed up the process but really it is super fast to do so now the fun part designing the front I did distress the edges on this um, just around here and also down the spine and I am going to use another Tim Holtz die cut and I will grab that so you see what I'm working on. So this is the die cut I'm going to be using. It's one of Tim Holtz design here. I don't know, can you see that? This is what I'm going to use. So I will be right back after I cut these up. So what I did here was just so a little zigzag stitch along the edge really close on both of these and um, while I was over at the die cutting machine cutting those out I also cut it out a few of these butterflies uh, it's Tim Holtz butterflies with the embossing folder that goes with that I really like a lot so I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'll work with this one first now this isn't a design that I'm just making up. I made a journal like this a couple years ago and I thought with this beautiful print I wanted to do the same thing. So I'm just going to go on my little stash of wordage and get a couple of these little fine tip pins from Tim Holtz. See what grabs me. Live the life you've imagined. I think I'll do that one. Let's see here. This is the one I want. But before I lay this down, 
um, I need to do some ribbon work. The seam binding. I want to tuck that under here before I um, attach it to the base. I gotta just kind of play with how I want this ribbon. I'm gonna have to back this so it has a little bit of color behind it so it pops out a little bit, I think. Okay, that looks better. Now I want to kind of put a big fluffy bow here. I don't know if I can even make one of those. I don't even know how I should do it. So bear with me while I figure this out. No, that's not it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Maybe that would work. Oh my gosh, would that work? I wonder where this one is. I'd like that to be a little bit smaller. Hmm, will that work? I did want it kind of messy. Maybe if I just sew that. Maybe I can. I'm just going to stitch that and see if that will work. I think I like how that turned out. Doesn't look too bad. I wanted it to look messy. Let's go ahead and build this. And there you have it. Look how beautiful this turned out. All the little details. And the brown one looks just as beautiful. I'm going to grab the other journals real quick. Okay, so here's the fun part to see what we accomplished today. We made a couple of covers that are very feminine and frilly. This purple one, I already have the closure attached to it, which is really nice. And I also love the idea that this one is just going to be waiting for me to design a front cover. Then the second one was kind of whimsical and fun, has this little moose on the front. I will probably do a stitch with a dark thread on the outside of this one. I left this one blank so I can still design the front cover. Pretty pretty. And then Finally, the one that we just got completed with all little details and I can still do a spine, either stitch on the outside so you can see it or I can do a hidden spine. It's just going to be fun to see how the insides are going to end up when I get to that. I am just really pleased. 
and I know that this video ended up being a tad longer than I intended, so I really want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to hang out with me. And um, gosh, I would like to invite those to subscribe to my channel who are not subscribers as of yet, because I would love for you to catch the upcoming videos of the series of constructing more journal covers uh, with different techniques and designs. Um, I guess this is where I get to mention the exciting news that I have for you guys. Some of you know that our youngest daughter Shelby had made me a Mima and Rich a Papa this spring with sweet little Ayla Marie. They came out to visit us in July and at the same time our eldest daughter who was living in Arizona moved back with us due to her job being affected by the COVID-19. Well, she, Tana, is expecting a puppy this Saturday. It's a yellow lab. She and I are gonna take a drive, actually tomorrow, tomorrow is Friday, to North Dakota to get her. And I convinced my mom, who lives only four hours from where we're gonna be getting this puppy, to meet us and then I'm going to take my mom home with us for the holidays so she's going to spend a couple of months with us and Shelby just informed me that she and Ayla are going to fly out as well so my little house is going to be full and did I mention ever that my mom has a miniature dachshund her name is Heidi and she is actually my doxy's sister, Ella Rue and Pippa. So there will be four miniature doxies and a new lab puppy in our quiet little home. Yes, all prayers for my husband will be greatly needed and appreciated. Because if you remember, Rich, he was like really excited that we had our house to ourselves just the two of us. So his world is going to be rocked, not just with all these little dogs in our house, but the mother-in-law and the two grown daughters that had moved out. Eee! As you know, I am like so excited. <laughs> I'm like beyond excited. And I think Rich is going to be fine uh, for one because he's been working a lot of hours the, those UPS men, you need to thank your UPS men because it is just crazy out there. My husband doesn't get home until around 10, 1030, and it is because he's delivering those packages. Also, we have had some bad weather, so that kind of has a have a tendency to make his day a little bit longer with the icy roads. But um, anyway, still... Uh, Thank your UPS men because they are, and women, because they are working hard. All right, you guys, thank you, thank you for being here with me today. Um, this has been so much fun, and as promised, I'm going to be doing a series of different techniques to build your journal covers. So until then, you guys stay safe and warmest of wishes. Bye.